Number one question that everyone asks is, how do I start a restaurant with zero experience? Today, I'm gonna to answer all those questions for you and reveal the six different steps and actually insights that I would point people to when I reply to their email. So then that way, you guys have all the skill set that you need to build a thriving, profitable restaurant. So make sure you guys keep watching. Hello friends, my name is Wilson, your friend in helping you build a profitable restaurant. Just wanna show some love to these two individuals for their love and support, and that's the community that I want to create a positive, uh, encouraging one, which is the reason why if you wanna get featured, make sure you guys go into the comment section below and leave us a comment. Now, without further ado, let's dive right in. Number one insight in starting a restaurant with zero experience is to know your strengths and know your weaknesses. How amazing would it be if you were to go into your restaurant, have your staff take care of all the customers for you, and you just dare to make sure everything is nice and handy. And then at the end of the, each month, you get paid handsomely. That is the goal and ideal place you wanna get to, and that's the reason why you need to know your strengths. You need to know your strengths, so then that way you can double down on that, whether it is hiring people, whether it be marketing, whether it be just cooking good food. Know your strengths, double down on it. That should be your focus. Now, know your weaknesses as well. So for example, if you're not that great at managing people, then you should definitely hire for your weaknesses. Hire a manager that is good with talking to people. Hire a manager that understands what culture is all about. On the other hand, if you're just not that great of a cook, but you really enjoy this industry, same thing. Hire a goddamn good cook. So then that way they can get good food for you and that way you can take care of your customers. Regardless of the fact, you need to know your weakness and you need to know your strengths. That's how you're gonna be able to build a thriving business. Second insight that I wanna share with you is to find a food concept that is in high demand. Now, what, is, what does that even mean? Finding a food recipe that within your city, people are actually always ordering and that becomes part of their eating habits. So for example, in Vancouver, BC, people love bubble tea, and which is the reason why there are a lot of bubble tea shops here. People also like Vietnamese food. People also like sushi. And these are our staple items in Vancouver, which is the reason why if you were to build a restaurant, build restaurant concepts revolving around these cuisines, then that way you can really capture the demand that is coming in, supply and demand. Why is that the case? Why is it super important? It is because let's say, for example, if you have the best fried turkey leg in Vancouver, no one's gonna buy it because that's just not the demographic that would enjoy this type of food staple. You might have the best dish out there, but the concept doesn't work with this demographic. Hence, no demand, it doesn't matter how much supply you have, no one's gonna buy it. That's the reason why you would always, always wanna find a food concept within your city that is in high demand, then you don't need to go and beg for business. Business will come to you. Third insight that I wanna share with you if you have no experience is the fact that location truly matters. I know a lot of people talk about that location, 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 yet rarely do people talk about why location is super important. Location is super important for your restaurant concept is because you wanna have it at a location, your concept at a location where your customers are hanging out. It doesn't matter how great or how prime your location is, if your customers are not hanging out around that area, then you're not gonna get sales, simple as that. So definitely understand where your customers hang out and have your food concepts by that area. To give you an example, my client has a Greek shop in downtown Vancouver, one of the best Greek foods out there, but yet they don't have much business. And I asked them, I'm like, why is that the case? Who are you really catering to? Then they start telling me about, hey, you know what? We cater to the families who miss home. And we were super popular when we were in a different part of the city. And we thought that it would be a great idea to move to a more prime location in downtown Vancouver. And once they moved, business went downhill. The reason why I went downhill is because they moved their location from where their customers are hanging out, which is around the city area, the Greek village area, and moved it to downtown Vancouver, where a majority of the people there are more millennials and they're not really used to this kind of cuisine, which is the reason why location, location truly does matter. If you guys wanna learn more about this, definitely check out this video as I talk more about the variables and the different components that would make a great location for your food concept. Point number four is to know your customers. This is something that I always preach is to know your customers, know exactly who you're serving your food concept to, 
And this is something that I talk about in point two and point three. Knowing the food concept is important, knowing the location is important, but knowing the fact that where and who is it that your customers are is really the essence of what you need to know and find out. 10 out of 10 people that I actually talk to or I consult for, they don't know who exactly is it that they're serving. They don't have a full page of description about their customer demographic. They don't name them. They don't know how much their monthly income is. They don't know what they like, what car they drive, uh, what sports they play, who is it that they root for. All these things, it is as detailed as possible. And you're talking to that one person. We're not talking about talking to the whole Vancouver or the whole city. We're talking about one person that we're talking to. By you focusing your narrow, by you serving that one demographic, you end up talking to everyone else. It is counterintuitive, but that is the way for you to gain any type of traction. So knowing your customers are super, super important. And if you wanna learn more about that, once again, we created the video right here for you to understand and identify your ideal customers. Next up is to know your business plan, guys. So many people I actually mentor, it is mind boggling. It's crazy. People don't know what they're doing. They don't have a solid plan. They don't have solid foundation of what they're doing. They simply are just thrown into the ocean and just trying to swim ashore, but not knowing where, which way they should swim to. Having a business plan is like having a guide, having a map, knowing exactly where you're heading. And that's the reason why it's super important for you to understand and build your business plan. On top of that, if you're looking for partners, if you're looking into raising funds, this is equally as important. So then that way you can actually bring this business plan and to actually raise funds with, or to actually engage with different partners. Nonetheless, having a business plan will only help you. As hard and as tedious as this process, going through this exercise allows you to have much more clarity within your business. What is your financial projection? Who is it that you're serving? What makes you different? What is your SWOT analysis? What is your unique selling proposition? All these things should be put in, into your business plan. If you don't know much about this or how to even create one, this video you should definitely watch because this is what we go into in depth of how you can create a business plan. So make sure you guys click this and watch this video. Final, final insight that I want to share with you is to always keep learning. This is one of the major things that I always, always preach is to actually keep learning. A lot of people feel complacent. They feel like that. You know what? After I go through high school, post-secondary, I don't need to learn anymore. And they end up just being out there on their own. But this whole journey, being a restauranteur is an art, is a science as well. So definitely go out there and actually learn from someone who's been there and done that. Why do we even want to do that? It is because the mistakes that they make, you can actually see, you can actually learn from that and avoid those mistakes. And oftentimes that are, that's like hundreds of thousands of dollars of mistakes that you're saving and years shaved off your learning curve, which is the reason why you should always go out there, find people that you are inspired by, find people who has been there and done that. And that's the way that you can actually shorten your time frame and to actually save a lot of money. And that's what I do as well, is that I learn from people who have been there and done that, maybe a few steps ahead of what, where I wanna achieve and ask them, how, how did you get there? What are some of the crucial mistakes? And that's what I'm doing for you guys is to share these videos to help you save time and to save money. And which is also the reason why we created this one hour long masterclass that dives into depth of how you can create a profitable restaurant from A to Z. Um, so definitely if you guys are interested in learning more about this trade, learning more about how do you build a successful restaurant, then you have to, I repeat, you must sign up for this free masterclass that we're going to be hosting very, very soon. It is in the, the link is in the description below. Definitely check it out. I really highly recommend you guys to, to be there and I'll be answering all your questions live during that masterclass as well. So definitely sign up. Aside from that, I really hope you enjoyed this video because you know what? A lot of you guys are ex not as experienced, but you guys have the desire, the ambition to actually go out there and achieve and to fight for your own world and to create something that you're proud of. And I want to be that friend of yours to help you get there. So make sure that if you guys enjoyed this video, smash the like button. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.